Now let me just give you an admonition. This is a warning. I give you a warning. There's people that will use this grace that we have, this grace inappropriately. There will be people who abuse it, misuse it, and confuse it. There will be people who will say, uh, okay, well, because you have this grace, it gives you a license to sin. I never said anything about a license to sin. Never once did I say that. Because we do not have a license to sin. We ought not to sin. This verse right here tells us to, to, because of these promise, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. That's not a license to sin. Friends, we, people will, people will misuse this grace. And they will say, they will say that, that, that a church that promotes this is, it's just too easy. They'll say that this grace is, is so free and so available. I say, well, thank you. It's like kids, uh, people, people, parents who say, well, you're, you're homeschooling your kids and, uh, you know, you're going to raise them in a greenhouse. I say, well, thank you. Because where do, where do plants get the best nutrients? Where do they get the best growth? Where, where, where do plants grow the best? They grow in a greenhouse, right? People say this grace is too easy. It's too free. It's too simple. It's, it's, it's too great. You know, here's the biggest, one of the biggest problems in America is we've taken the, great, the greatness out of the good news. The good news is that we're saved by God's grace. When is it that we've taken the, the, the greatness out of the good news? And we've made it some structure that I have to do this, and I have to do this, and I have to do this, and if I don't do that, then this, and if I don't do that, then this, and if I don't do that, then this. As opposed to saying, man, we are saved by God's grace. Now, I'm, I'm, I am an, an advocate, a promoter for living a right life for God. I, I am. But trying to work your way to sanctification is not the way to do it. That's legalism. I say we're saved kept saved and we live by God's grace and I thank God for that and is it easy for us yes for him it cost him his son and so we ought to be thankful that someone was so gracious as to give us salvation to give us the security and to give us the sanctification we need to be able to live a life that is pleasing to him not because we're scared of him because we love him. And when we get that right, friends, let me tell you, you're going to have joy in your life. And you'll be walking on clouds. You'll be thinking, man, I, 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 just, I just love the Lord. Oh, I felt. You know what? God's grace covered that. Yes, but I'm going to get up and I, I know that was a sin against you, Lord. And, and I'm sorry. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to serve you. And I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to focus my relationship on you. And I love you, Lord. And, and yeah, this is consequences. And I blew it. I get it. But, but you know what? I thank God. And I'm kept saved and that I can serve you with grace. A lot of churches promote works for sanctification. It's all about you, by the way. And salvation is so different from that. Salvation, security, sanctification. So different than that. I love the fact that he saves us. I want to show you this illustration. And we're not going to take communion today. It's a little late. But we'll take it uh, maybe next week. If you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Savior, if you don't know where you're going when you die, now listen carefully. If you don't know where you're going when you die, I want you to know that you can know where you're going when you die. You can absolutely know it as a fact. As sure as the Scripture, you can absolutely know where you're going. I know that I'm going to be with the Lord when I die. I absolutely, knew, I absolutely know that. I want this hand right here to represent you and me, and I want this wallet to represent our sin. The Bible says God loves us but hates our sin. There's a lot of people who try to get saved by their works. They say, Lord, as long as I turn over a new leaf, as long as I live a good life, as long as I head the right direction, get baptized, walk an aisle, pray a prayer, raise a hand, whatever, as long as I do something, I can be saved problem is, is you still have this sin. And this sin requires a payment. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. 
The wages of sin is not church membership. It's not giving money to the church. It's not walking an aisle, praying a prayer. The wages of sin is death. Someone had to die. Aren't you glad that Jesus Christ came to this earth 2,000 years ago to die on the cross for your sin? You realize that he made the payment for us because he knew that we couldn't make it. He knew that we couldn't make this sin payment, so he came, to, he came from heaven as a man to die on the cross to make the death payment, the debt payment for our sin. That's salvation by grace. That we didn't do anything. We don't have to do anything. The Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith. And the wonderful thing is, is, is then we end up in God's hand and by the power of God we're saved by his grace, kept saved by his grace. He secures us forever. And there is nothing that can separate us, height or depth, nothing. Nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nothing can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ. That's Romans 8, by the way. He holds us and he keeps us saved forever by his grace. And then you know what that allows us to do? That allows us to live our life by works? No. By grace. By grace you have been saved. God's grace, he saves us, keeps us saved, and allows us to live our life in the presence of his grace. I know some will misuse it, some will abuse it, and some will confuse it. That's why we have to be clear about it. That we live our lives by grace. Does that that negate any obedience? No. Do we have to obey him in order to be saved? No. To stay saved? No. To grow as a Christian? No. God loves us so much he sent his son to die for us. And if you in the quietness of your mind just believe that today, you'll you'll have salvation. You'll be secure in that salvation. And if you can live your life in the presence of God's grace, you will grow in Christ. You will love him because he first loved us.